Hi, YouTubers and what savers everywhere. It's MargaretGeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? Hang on. That's really, really good. Yeah, again, McDonald's McCafe Premium Roast. <laughs> I decided to have this because I uh, found the Bob Evans uh, coffee mug. This is a local chain uh, throughout Northeast Ohio and some other states. Um, uh, sit down restaurant, Bob Evans. Boy, is that good, but in here it is uh, right here. But first, coffee, <laughs> Bob Evans. Yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. And boy, that's a good cup of coffee this morning. Having a hard time showing it to you on camera because of the weight and the, the heat. I mean, it's a good hot cup of coffee. Hang on. Boy, that's terrific. And again, this morning, I used the uh, AeroPress. Again, big thanks to Rodney Ripplinger. Really do appreciate it, Rodney. Thank you very, very much. And I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. As we like to say on the show, a good hot coffee. Wait a minute, where do we say that? We say that right here. There it is <laughs> on screen. A good hot coffee, a trusty mug. Let the caffeine go to work. Gentlemen, absolutely. Boy, we got a great show for you this morning. Hey, if you're taking me along on your morning commute, thanks very much for the lift. I really do appreciate it. I want to get that in before I forgot. Uh, but uh, again, we've got a great show for you this morning. Got some great comments and refill. Got some great stuff in uh, new wet shaving gear. And uh, one particular item really, really came to my rescue. Uh, and another familiar item really came to my rescue. I don't know if you can see it. I got a little bit of a nick right here on the left side of my face. I don't know if you can see that. A little bit right there. And uh, this new item really, really came in handy. You know, we just talked about it last week. Somebody asked me, uh, a viewer asked a question, do you ever have any bad shaves? And I said, you know, once in a blue moon, uh, you know, I will. And, and every once in a blue moon, I'll nick myself. Well, it was a blue moon last, <laughs> last week, a few days ago, actually. And uh, I ended up uh, catching a nick, really kind of a fluke thing. What's interesting about it is that uh, I saw the nick first, and then I felt it. Have you ever had that kind of shaving, Nick? It wasn't big or anything like that, but I saw it first, and then I felt it. Now, I've also had those nicks where I feel it, I don't see it, and then all of a sudden, uh, several seconds later, then it emerges. <laughs> and of course, when you put a little bit of water on there, it thins the blood a little bit, and it looks a little bit worse than what it actually is. But again, um, some items really came to the rescue. Uh, some, some items we've talked about came to the rescue. And one new item in particular really, really helped out. And we'll be talking about that later on in the show. So again, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. Uh, and let's kick things off like we do every week with a viewer morning shaving tip. Okay, this morning's shaving tip comes from viewer Edward B. And Edward writes, Hello, Mark. My name is Edward, and I wanted to say thanks for the Monday morning mailbag and shave product reviews you post on YouTube. I appreciate your comments regarding the Kai razor blades and plan to give them a try. As you can readily admit, we all take a second shower on some days, especially during summer evenings, and I have found that the Gillette Aftershave Gel blue provides a fresh cool relief sensation that absorbs quickly without leaving stubble feeling sticky or gummy it is very inexpensive and also preps the face for the next morning shave regards edward b hey edward that's an absolutely really really useful great shaving tip because last week we talked about uh, using the cube before you turn in in the evening. Jimmy V passed along that helpful tip about using uh, the Phoenix Shaving Cube 2.0 uh, to kind of wash your face before you turn in in, in the evening. And uh, the next morning, you're kind of ready to go for the shave, so to speak. And I think this is a really, really good tip. Uh, and uh, the reason why we're mentioning, now here's the Gillette Blue right here in my right hand. That is the gel. They also make a lotion in a white bottle. But uh, two reasons why we're uh, mentioning this is because, yeah, 
it, it, for, for some, for you, for some, for some others, it'll probably be a good prep for the next day's shave. Give it a try. See if it works for you. Uh, the other reason is, is because if you're on the road and you're traveling and you find that you forgot to pack your aftershave, uh, splash or balm, that sort of thing, these Gillette uh, lotions and gels right here are plentiful at big box stores and drug stores and local pharmacies and that sort of thing. I see these in the big box stores all the time. So uh, they're very, very good. They are inexpensive. And uh, you know what? They make a really great aftershave in a pinch if you're traveling or even uh, in, you know, as a daily driver in your shave den. Uh, and also, as Edward suggests here, uh, it's a nice cooling sensation for those hot summer days or when you're turning in, your face is kind of prepped for the next morning. So thanks very much for passing that shave tip along regarding the Gillette aftershave gel. Uh, really do appreciate it, Edward. And to say thank you for you and only you, an original signed George sketch. So please email me your snail mail address to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com, and I will send this to you post haste. And if you out there would like an original signed George sketch, just email me a shaving tip. Email that tip to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com. And if I use it on the Monday Morning Mailbag Shaving Tip segment, you too will receive an original signed George sketch. So Edward, thanks very, very much for a very, very helpful and useful tip. Really do appreciate it. Okay, here's your weekly reminder that the Monday Morning Mailbag is available as a podcast. It's available on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Google Podcasts. Simply search for Monday Morning Mailbag and more, and the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast should come right up, as well as episodes of our other podcast, Second Cup. So again, it's available on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Google Podcasts. Just search for Monday Morning Mailbag and more, and the Monday Morning Mailbag will come up as a podcast, as well as our other podcast, Second Cup. Well, as many of you know, the channel has reached 9,000 subscribers. Thank you all very, very much. Once again, I really do appreciate it. And we are giving away four prizes, and that is due to the generosity of some viewers out there. Thank you all again very, very much for your generosity. Let me just name those viewers again. Robert Fagan, Alex Lopez, Beth Jones, Mark Bagwell, Mark Williams, Brian Foley, Charlie Wise, Shannon Soaps, Maggard Razors, the Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup, James German, and all the folks at Supply. Thank you all very, very much for contributing some great, great prizes where, whereby we can give away four prizes in this 9,000 subscriber giveaway. And uh, really, um, uh, heartfelt appreciation. Thank you all very, very much. Uh, now, we did have a little bit of a hiccup, uh, and uh, Stan Chapman and Julio Rodriguez uh, both uh, emailed me and gave me a heads up that there was a spammer replying to everyone's comment. Well, it's been reported to YouTube, and that spammer has been removed. Now, please know when I do these uh, video um, uh, giveaways, these uh, subscriber giveaway videos, I do not reply to any of the comments there. I read all the comments, and thank you very much for all the very, very kind words and good wishes. I really do appreciate that. But I don't want my name to be in the prize pool. Uh, I'm thinking that that could maybe offset or upset uh, the drawing. So uh, I try to keep my name. I do keep my name out of it. And uh, that's why I'm not replying to any of the comments. But I've read all the comments, and I continue to read all the comments as people are entering. And uh, some really, really nice, nice and kind words. Thank you all very, very much. So the spammer has been removed. Um, we got some great prizes. Uh, thanks again to Robert Fagan, Alex Lopez, Beth Jones, Mark Bagwell, Mark Williams, Brian Foley, Charlie Wise, Shannon Soaps, Maggard Razors, Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup, James German, and all the folks at Supply for some outstanding, outstanding wet shave gear items that are making up four prizes. So that drawing is going to take place on March 3rd, 2023. Uh, and uh, 
I'll be doing that drawing sometime on that Friday, sometime, well, <laughs> however my schedule permits, and then I will uh, post those results either late Friday night or early Saturday morning. So you have until Friday, March 3rd, 2023, to enter. The contest is open to everyone around the world. Just uh, subscribe to the channel, comment on that video, the subscriber giveaway video, comment on that video, and have a valid address that the Postal Services can deliver to. And that's it. Open to everyone around the globe. So again, my thanks, my sincere thanks to all the viewers who very, very generously donated those prizes. My thanks to everyone for the kind words and the good wishes. I really do appreciate it. And uh, thank you again for 9,000 subscribers. We'll stay on top of the spammer situation. And if it happens again... I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll report it to YouTube and I'll have that uh, spammer removed and we'll just uh, have to stay vigilant on it. It's happened before in the past and, uh, and hopefully, uh, hopefully it will be uh, uh, infrequent. Uh, let me put it to you that way. Hopefully it won't happen again and uh, we'll, have, um, we'll have no spammers by the time the drawing rolls around on Friday, March 3rd. 2023. So that's the deadline. So get up there and uh, check out the video, subscribe, comment, have a postal address anywhere in the world. You can enter. And again, my thanks to everyone for 9,000 subscribers. Really, I sincerely, heart, I sincerely appreciate it. Heartfelt appreciation. Thank you all very, very much. Well, I'm dropping in here really quickly because something just arrived on my doorstep and I want to make sure to share it with you. This is really, really very, very exciting. As you can see, I got a different shirt on. It has kind of a desert motif, don't you think? Almost a color scheme of uh, things you would see out in the desert, perhaps. Well, that's because this has to do with Arizona. This Saturday, February 25th, 2023 at 9 a.m., there is going to be the Arizona Shavers meetup at the Razor Emporium. Starting time, I believe, as from what I can understand, is 9 a.m. I will link to their Facebook page so you can get that information and contact Matt Pisarsik and the other host, Arizona Shavers, for more information. So if you're in the area this Saturday, February 25th, 2023 uh, is the uh, is the Arizona Shavers Meetup, and they are going to have some wonderful guests there. They're going to be having uh, wet shaving products, WSP. They're going to be having Bricktown, uh, South Florida wet shavers, uh, Frugal Shave, and also Phoenix Shaving will be in attendance. Now, if you are there, you will have the opportunity to purchase an absolutely wonderful bundle from Phoenix Shaving made exclusively for this particular meetup. It is called Phoenix Lights. This is what showed up on my doorstep just moments ago. I have to share this with you. Absolutely wonderful. And this is named in honor of that, uh, that spaceship event back in 1997. Do you remember that? Back in Phoenix, the spring of 1997, where this, all these lights were above Phoenix flying in the sky. Must have been a huge spaceship, everyone was thinking. Maybe that's a big spaceship. Remember that? And you can see here on the art, right there, <laughs> like a flying wing that's lit up. Huh? Isn't that fantastic? Yeah, well, this will be available for sale. And uh, they also have a companion cube for it. Yeah, absolutely. All made in honor of uh, the uh, Arizona Shavers meetup. Again, this Saturday, February 25th. 2023. I believe the starting time is 9 a.m. Now, uh, this scent is absolutely wonderful. This is absolutely fantastic. This, <laughs> this is really a great scent. So if you are in the area, get over there, check it out, and, and, and get some of this because it really is a great scent. Here are the scent notes. The top notes are citrus and grapefruit. Middle and base notes are jasmine, woody, amber, musk, and oak moss. Absolutely fantastic, wonderful, wonderful scent. And uh, if you're not able to make the event, uh, this should be available online at some point. Um, not entirely sure, maybe Friday night, not entirely sure. Don't quote me on that. And I don't know how long it will be available online. Probably best 
to get to the uh, the Arizona Shavers meetup and get right over to the Phoenix Shaving uh, table and um, you know buy it right there and say hi to Doug and Fran and uh, Matt and everyone else that's there because it looks like an absolutely wonderful, wonderful event. Again, I will link it below. Uh, to their Facebook page, and also link a video uh, which is which talks about the Phoenix Lights, so you can get get some background information on that if you've never heard of that. And uh, just mark your calendars; it's this Saturday. So if you are in the area, Phoenix area, uh, or you're nearby, four or five hours, three hours, two hours, whatever whatever it is. Wow, it looks like an absolutely wonderful, wonderful event. So I hope you have the opportunity to attend. And I also hope you have the opportunity to get the bundle, the Phoenix Lights bundle from uh, Phoenix Shaving, who will be uh, in attendance there as a guest. And of course, they also have the companion cube for the Phoenix Lights. So uh, it looks like an absolutely great event. Uh, they got some other great guests there. And uh, you know what? You get to visit the Razor Emporium and look around and see what's there. It looks like an absolutely fantastic, fantastic event. So again, February 25th, that's this Saturday, 2023. Okay, let's start over. <laughs> it's this Saturday, February 25th, 2023 at 9 a.m. I will link uh, the Facebook page below so you can get more information. Uh, the Arizona Shavers Meetup this Saturday. My thanks to Doug and Fran and everyone at Phoenix Shaving for passing this along and allowing me to uh, share this with you and also allowing me to talk a little bit about the Arizona Shavers meetup that's taking place this Saturday. So I hope to get a review done on it this week sometime. And uh, I hope you're able to attend the Arizona Shavers meetup. And if you do, I hope you get some Phoenix lights. Thanks again to Doug, Fran, Huxley, and everyone at Phoenix Shaving, to Matt Pisarsik, the Arizona Shavers. And uh, hey, everyone have fun at the Arizona Shavers meetup this Saturday. Viewer Chaz King sent along this heads up. Hey Mark, Chaz King here again. Wanted to give you a heads up if it's not too late and tickets are still available to add this to this week's 3MB. Maggard's first meetup in three years. Tickets just went on sale today. That was Friday, February 17th, 2023 at noon. The meetup is being held on June 3rd, 2023. Upwards of 20 vendors will be there. Tickets are going fast. They've sold almost 100 out of the 220 available already. Hope to see you there. Chaz, Chaz, thanks very much for passing this information along. And here is the website, folks, where you can get a ticket as of uh, this recording there were 132 left and as they write here maggard razors is hosting our sixth annual wet shaving meetup on june 3rd 2023 in 2019 before covid we saw over 240 attendees and 24 vendors making it one of the largest wet shaving events in the usa this year, the event will be capped at 220 attendees and 20 vendors, and we're charging a nominal ticket fee to secure your spot. And the general admission ticket is $34. You'll receive a $12 meal voucher for a participating restaurant in downtown Adrian, free soft drinks, water for the day, entrance into drawings for door prizes, guaranteed 100 plus winners chosen, some big ticket items, guaranteed samples, freebies from most of the vendors in attendance, a massive pay it forward table. I'll let you look at all the details regarding that. Here are the confirmed vendors, Ariana and Evans, Barrister and Mann, Captain's Choice, Katie's Bubbles, Chiseled Face, The Groomatorium, Eleven, Henri et Victoria, House of Mammoth, Carve Shaving Company, Shannon Soaps, Southern Witchcrafts, Dogwood Handcrafts, Sterling Soap Company, Summer Break Soaps, Through the Fire Fine Crafts, Holy Caw, Wolf Whiskers, Zingari Man, and of course they'll have notable guests, Mantic 59 of the Sharpologist, Michael Friedberg, Jinx the Cat, and HD Shaves. Uh, there's also an after meet gathering from 8.30 p.m. to uh, looks like midnight at the Hampton Inn and Suites Conference Room on Saturday night. 
and there is hotel information available. So there you go. My thanks to Chaz King for passing along this heads up Maggard Razors Meetup on June 3rd, 2023. Tickets are going fast. Hopefully by the time this airs on the Monday morning mailbag, there will still be tickets available. So again, thanks to Chaz King for the heads up. Really do appreciate it. Well, I got a low coffee brew. I need one that's new. How about you? Let's go back for a refill. Well, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. I hope you went back for a refill. I sure did. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, boy, that's a, that's a good cup of coffee. Again, we're using the McDonald's McCafe in my Bob Evans coffee mug. Two great places to get a really, really good breakfast. And let's face it, those McDonald's Egg McMuffins, those are great. <laughs> There's something about having a, an Egg McMuffin. Uh, you know, I mean, wow, those are good. Now, you don't have to do it every single day, obviously. But, uh, you know, that that once in a blue moon or once every few weeks, you get up, you get one of those Egg McMuffins. Boy, that, yeah, that sometimes it just hits the spot. And that's all you need is an Egg McMuffin, uh, nothing else. You want to get a hash brown, that's fine. But, man... That's a, that single egg McMuffin and a cup of coffee, that is really, really good. And the Bob Evans menu, boy, they've got a great breakfast menu. Uh, so if you want a nice sit-down breakfast in the morning, and they serve uh, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, but if you want a really good breakfast, boy, Bob Evans, they really do make a, a nice breakfast, and they're, they're famous for their sausage, uh, Bob Evans sausage. So they're in Michigan, Ohio. They started in Ohio. I believe they're in Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, uh, I think Indiana. I'm not sure. Anyhow, I'll link them below so you can um, you can find them. But it's kind of like a uh, a couple of uh, breakfast restaurants here that uh, we're featuring on the Monday morning mailbag this morning. The McDonald's coffee, which is always very very good, and Bob Evans, which all, which also has a great great uh, breakfast menu. Okay, let's get to some of these refill uh, comments here. Paul Denali wrote, "All due respect." But as a relatively new wet shaver, I think recommending a sample pack, especially one with 15 different blades to a beginner, is a terrible idea. I started out just using two different blades for several weeks and am glad I did so. There are enough variables to sort out without introducing so many different blades to a beginner. Better to concentrate on technique. Hey, Paul, great point. You know, there's nothing cast in stone that says you have to get a sampler pack of, uh, you know, 15, 20, 30 blades, whatever. Very, very good point. And uh, you know what? It's nice to have the option to get a sampler pack with a few blades or, or just use a couple of blades or get a sampler pack get a sampler pack with, uh, with more blades, with a, a larger variety of blades. Uh, either way, I think works, depending on the individual. It's just nice to have that option. Your point is really, really well taken. Uh, John Meyer uh, contributed to this conversation. He said, I agree that too many choices sometimes just confuses someone. I would recommend a smaller assortment, possibly a five pack. Razor Rock, Maggards, or PAA offers them. Good luck and stay focused. Hey, John, great, great compromise. <laughs> I, I think that's I, absolutely great. I think both points are uh, very well taken. Uh, so I, again, nice to have the option. Uh, nice to have the discussion. John, uh, Joe Rouse. Joe Rouse uh, commented uh, on this topic. He said, I purchased the blade sampler pack that Roderick McLeod mentioned. I got it because I wanted to try a Bic blade. It wasn't all I thought it would be, but I pulled out the Derby blade from that pack the other day and really liked it. Well, there you go. Hey, thanks very much for that, Joe. There you go. That's where a sampler pack really, really comes in handy, where it really, really shines. You, you happen to stumble on a blade in that pack that really, really works for you. And uh, yeah, the big blade uh, didn't work for you. Hey, your mileage may vary. But uh, really, uh, terrific, terrific comments on this topic, gentlemen. Really, really do appreciate the input. Uh, Mark Bagwell sent along this. I prefer witch hazel over alum, less drying. I use Thayer's. 
Try not to use a witch hazel with alcohol. Dermatologists recommended alcohol-free. For the man who spoke about misting witch hazel, I found this from Thayer. I believe this to be on the expensive side, but I thought I would show it. Now, this is Thayer's alcohol-free witch hazel facial mist toner with aloe vera, rose petal, uh, in an eight-ounce bottle. Uh, and he also uh, passed along, Mark also passed along, Quinn's Alcohol-Free Witch Hazel Rose Petal, 16 ounces, uh, and uh, Quinn's Alcohol-Free Facial Toner Mist with Pure Rose Water, 8 ounces. Uh, and he also passed along this one, uh, Quinn's Alcohol-Free Witch Hazel Pink Grapefruit and Orange Rind in 16 ounces, and uh, Quinn's alcohol-free facial toner mist with pure rose water in the eight-ounce uh, bottle. Uh, and uh, Mark continues here. Quinn's and Thayer's are the two best witch hazels made. Both have aloe vera. Can't go wrong with either one. Most witch hazels come with alcohol. Never, ever use these. The distilling process kills the tannins in the witch hazel. It's the tannins that are good for your skin. I found this on Google, and he passed along this information, which reads, so what exactly are tannins? If you've ever peeled a grape and tasted the skin, you know what we're talking about. The compounds that make it bitter are called tannins, and they're the same ones that ensure your favorite witch hazel skincare products work so well. Fruits, vegetables, and nuts contain tannins. Well, hey, Mark, thanks very much for the great information on witch hazel. So if you've tried the alum block and it doesn't quite work for you, or you want to you know, mix up your shave a little bit, post-shave routine, try some witch hazel. Here's some very, very good recommendations from Mark Bagwell. I'll have those links below. Mark, thank you very, very much. Uh, Mark also uh, continues here about pearl razors. He says, about the pearl razors and the finish. This is only my opinion. It costs 20 bucks. <laughs> buy two, buy three. If the finish fades, not convinced it will, uh, then toss it and use the other. Uh, what have you lost? Like I said, that's only my opinion. But pearl razors are excellent razors for the price. And I haven't mentioned how cheap you can buy those razors in India and have them sent to you. Many of them are less than $5. Buy four, buy eight. Give them as Christmas gifts. Oh, darn. Now, <laughs> oh, darn. Now, all my friends know what they're getting as Christmas gifts. <laughs> yeah, this was in regards to the Pearl Razor review we did on the SHD-24 Pearl Razor with that really, really terrific looking uh, brass handle. And uh, one viewer commented that, commented that there might be some kind of paint or lacquer or something coating that handle that could flake over time. Now, I don't know if that is going to be the case or not. It's a beautiful razor. Hang on, you know what? Let me get the razor for you. I'll show you too. <laughs> I'll show okay, it to you. Okay, hang on one minute. All right, here it is. It comes in a box like this. Comes with 10 blades. Uh, 10 razor blades are the gentleman razor blades. Uh, polishing cloth. But here it is right here. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that an absolutely beautiful, beautiful looking razor? Less than $20 on Amazon. It just gives a wonderful, wonderful shave. And uh, really, it's a very, very affordable well-made razor that delivers a nice, nice shave. Pearl, uh, pearl razors, pearl shaving uh, is really doing a great job in introducing some really, really terrific razors to the market. We talked about the Flexi, the Pearl Blaze. Yeah, they have some really, really nice products. So yeah, Mark, thanks very, very much for those comments. Really do appreciate it. Uh, it is a terrific razor. And hey, you know what? It's 20 bucks. Give it a shot. Uh, you can't go wrong at that price. Absolutely. This comes from Jerome Barbier. Uh, I had a bad shave with Razor Rock, never touched it again. I wanted to know if he was talking about the razor or the shave soap. And uh, he said, uh, the shave soap, Caribbean Holiday. And uh, I thanked him for the clarification. Now, this, this is, uh, uh, the reason why I mention it is it goes back to what uh, Doug and Fran were saying on the uh, Razor Company's uh, live stream live Instagram stream uh, last week. It was a Sunday evening, I believe. And if you haven't seen it, uh, follow them on Instagram because they got a really, really great live stream uh, that goes up uh, talking about wet shaving. And Doug and Fran from Phoenix Shaving happen to be a guest. Well, Doug, Fran, and Huxley. <laughs> they happen to be guests. 
And uh, Douglas was saying that um, some shave soaps, uh, if you use some shave soaps and for, for some reason you get a little bit of a burning sensation from a shave soap, and I know some viewers out there have mentioned that, that uh, they, they get a shave soap, they love the scent, they, they, they lather up with it, and for some reason they get a little bit of a burning sensation on their skin, and it's kind of off-putting. Uh, Douglas was saying if, you, if that happens to you, don't throw the soap out, you can use it as a car freshener. I thought, wow, that's fantastic. Use it as a car freshener. So, uh, Jerome, I hope that uh, the Caribbean holiday scent agrees with you. You can use it as a car freshener. Uh, I thought that was absolutely brilliant idea, and I wanted to pass that along to you. So thanks to Doug and Fran for a really, really fantastic, fantastic idea uh, regarding using a shave soap that might not work for you uh, for whatever reason. Hey, use it as a car freshener. That's really, really fantastic. And that wraps up this week's refill segment. Thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's check out some new wet shaving gear. Viewer Alex Lopez very, very kindly and generously sent along the following shave soap that I've already used a couple of times, and it's wonderful. From Rex Supply Company, 1955 Shaving Soap. This is wonderful. Here's what they, uh, here's what they write on their product page. 1955, the first offering from Rex Supply Company, is a subtle, confident scent. Inspired by the most popular colognes from the 1950s with floral notes of hyacinth and gardenia, woodsy notes of vetiver and sandalwood. The complex 1955 aroma is unlike anything available today. Nothing musky, no headache-inducing smack, and nothing exotic about this classic American construction. This tallow soap offers the most clean, comfortable, hydrating lather on the market today. Old World Tallow provides a rich cushion and leaves you lightly fragranced with the best poche feel you've ever experienced. I agree with all that. There is something about this tallow soap that is so distinct and so different from other tallow soaps out there. I don't know what it is, but th there is a distinct difference uh, with the lather and how it feels on, on uh, how it felt on my skin. It really, really is very unique, very good. I agree. It's got some great hydration, some wonderful, wonderful glide. I used it before cameras rolled and it really aided in allowing the razor and the blade to skate over that nick that I have uh, to where it didn't aggravate anything at all. Really delivered a beautiful, beautiful shave. So uh, I built the lather in a lathering bowl and uh, it really whipped up wonderfully well. Now, there was a little bit of a, uh, a difference in the water to soap ratio from some other tallow soaps that I've used. And uh, it was not difficult to dial in at all. There is just a little bit of a difference there. I can't tell you exactly what it is. Maybe I used a little less water than, uh, than some other tallow soaps. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but it did lather very easily and very quickly. I'm just saying that there was a little bit of a difference in the water to soap ratio than some other tallow soaps out there. Uh, but uh, very, very easy to dial in the correct ratio and really get a nice, nice lather. I really enjoyed the shave. Here are the scent notes. Hyacinth, gardenia, vetiver, and sandalwood. A really, really terrific, terrific scent. And again, there is... Boy, it's a... It's a wonderful, wonderful scent. And it's exactly what their description says. Subtle and confident. Yeah, it really is terrific. And it's not musky and uh, there's nothing exotic. It's just classic Americana kind of a, uh, kind of a scent. And 1955 seems to be the perfect, perfect name for it. I really enjoyed uh, the shave with this. My thanks to Alex Lopez for sending this along. I'll have links below. This really is a very, very good tallow-based uh, shave soap. Uh, why they say old world tallow, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but uh, as they say uh, also on their product page, uh, Rex Supply Company's old world tallow shaving soap is a love letter to the traditional soaps men have used for centuries. Yeah, and uh, absolutely 
spot on. This is really, really terrific. So I really enjoyed the shave with this. I enjoyed the lather. Uh, very easy to dial in uh, the correct uh, ratio to uh, water to soap. Eh, you might uh, you might have to work on that just a little bit, but uh, boy, you dial it in and it gives you a great, great lather. Really, really enjoyed the shave with the uh, 1955 shave soap. So again, my thanks to Alex Lopez for passing this along. This is really terrific. Folks, I'll have the link below uh, where you can get this from Rex Supply 1955 Old World Tallow Shaving Soap. My thanks very much to Alex Lopez. Well, maybe you are on the email list for Phoenix Shaving. If you aren't, really sign up to get those email alerts because this past week, uh, they put out an alert on their new Quantum Razor, and my goodness, did that sell out fast. I could not believe how quickly it sold out. But I did want to mention it and link it below, because here's the message they have on their product page. Sorry, folks, but Quantum managed to sell out faster than we had expected. But fear not, more are on order. To be notified when this occurs, click the email when available button on the right or click here for smart alerts. And this uh, Quantum Razor looks wonderful. As they write on their product page, the Quantum Safety Razor, one of our most epic homages to date, a tribute to the vintage Eclipse Red Ring. Collectors will immediately know what I am referring to. This original design was created by James Neal and Company, of Composite Steelworks of Sheffield, England, or Steel City. Released in the mid-30s, it had a good 20-year run before disappearing into obscurity, as all epic razors are wont to do. Now, here's what's really interesting here. As Douglas writes, an open comb straight bar? Kinda. It certainly is a unique Art Deco design, bringing with it a lot of innovations, including a magnet on the handle to pick up blades. Yep, they did it first, folks. It's not a new idea. Note, we did not add the magnet to ours. Instead, we combined it with our ever-popular flare tip, another homage in its own right to the handle of the Gillette red tip. It really just seemed like it was meant to be. The red ring meets the red tip. What can I say? I blend things for a living. <laughs> and it continues here. Which base plate will you gravitate towards? The Alpha or the Omega? Looking for something less aggressive? Maybe you are not so in need of a shave today but can't resist? Reach for the Omega, the mildest of the two. When you want to turn up the aggression, go for the Alpha. Add a little zing to that red ring. Now this is CNC machined. It's polished stainless steel and bead blasted brass. How about that? Uh, you get a, a brass alpha plate. Uh, you get a brass omega plate. Uh, you get the top cap. You get the brass tip. You get the handle. And uh, it's, you know, absolutely beautiful. It, it includes the brass flare tip, which you can, you know, also switch off with some other flare tips if you happen to have the, uh, already have the Ascension Select or maybe you bought some extra uh, uh, flare tips for the Ascension Select, so it looks like you'll be able to swap all those off. So it's the Quantum Safety Razor CNC machined brass and stainless steel. I'll have a link to that below. It absolutely looks gorgeous. Get on the email alerts, uh, you know, sign up for email alerts or smart alerts. Get ready for when that razor is restocked because it really does look like a beauty. So uh, again, the, uh, from Phoenix Shaving, the uh, Quantum Razor. Again, I'll have links below. I want to mention another Phoenix Shaving item that uh, recently arrived on my doorstep. Here it is right here, Diver Down Shave Stick. Yeah, how about that? Great, great travel shave stick product. Uh, has this great cap right here, just unscrews like that. And the bottom dial will dispense the product. You wet your face, then you rub the uh, shave stick around your face, get your brush, and then do a face lather. I also suppose you could probably scrape some of this off of the top and then uh, place it in the Phoenix Shaving Travel Scuttle and have a nice warm lather. You probably could do it that way too. Uh, but the shave stick 
a terrific, terrific deal. Uh, $10.95. Uh, they have three different scents available. They have the Diver Down in uh, CK6, Shave Chaser in CK6, and Atomic Age Bay Rum in the Crown King original formula. Each of those are $10.95. Now, if for some reason you want to use a different Phoenix shaving uh, shave soap scent, uh, one that uh, you prefer, well, they also sell the do-it-yourself travel shave soap tube. That's $1.75. So then you could take your favorite Phoenix shaving shave soap and just mash it into that tube and uh, take it along with you that way. Or, you know, you can uh, get one of your other favorite shave soaps, uh, another brand, another artisan, and either uh, grate it into the, uh, into the uh, do-it-yourself shave soap tube or mash it in there if it's a crope, that sort of thing. Yeah, a really, really neat, neat option. So uh, again, Phoenix Shaving offers uh, three of their shave soaps in a travel tube like this. Atomic Age Bay Rum in their Crown King Original Formula, Diver Down in CK6, and Shave Chaser in CK6. And they also offer, for $1.75, a do-it-yourself travel shave soap tube so you could pack in your favorite shave soap to take with you when you're traveling. And let's face it, spring and summer right around the corner, a lot of us are going to be taken to the road and taking to the air. Uh, a really, really nice option to take with us. I figure I could take, I love Diver Down. I figure I could take Diver Down, the Diver Down Star Jelly, uh, the Travel Scuttle, my favorite razor, and I'm good to go. So uh, <laughs> yeah, a really, really nice option for travel this spring and this summer. I'll have links below. Okay, as we mentioned earlier in the show, uh, there's a shaving item that really, really helped me uh, get around this nick, so to speak. And it's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful item from the folks at Pearl Shaving. They very, very kindly sent it along. I've done a review with it. I've used it uh, a couple of times, and it really is a terrific, terrific razor. Here it is right here, the Pearl K2 razor. Viewers have been telling me how much they love this razor. It comes with two handles, a long handle like this and a short handle like this. It has a low-profile razor head. The end tabs of the razor blade are enclosed in the razor head. It delivers a very mild yet efficient shave. Really, really enjoyed using this razor. And as I say, the mild quality of the razor allowed that blade to just skate over that little bit of a nick I had there. And uh, it did a wonderful job. Two days worth of beard growth uh, requires three passes from this razor for me. One day's worth of beard growth, it's a two-pass uh, razor. Uh, it just delivers a really, really nice result. It is on the milder side. It has nice efficiency. And boy, the it has some nice weight, some nice heft. It has a slender handle. The handles are made from brass. The razor head is a zinc alloy, which is uh, plated. Let me show you the, um, the razor head right here. It has a matte and high polish finish. The base plate has a high polish finish and the cap has more of a matte finish. So when they go together, there is kind of a nice contrast there to it. See that right there? And it, it, there is some really, really nice precision uh, right there when the base plate and the cap come together. Uh, it's less than $24 now on Amazon at the time I'm shooting this video. And it's like 31% off. It's regularly a $34.99 razor. It's like $23.99, something like that, right now on Amazon. So a really nice deal on it. Several viewers have told me how much they like this razor, and I can understand why. It really is a very well-made razor, and it delivers a nice, mild shave. And I also like the, the fact that you're getting two handles with it. You get two handles. They also give you blades. Now, this razor came with a razor blade I've never heard of before and I had not used until I used this razor, Willie's, Willie's razor blade right there. And it was a, a nice blade that uh, paired up nicely with this razor. I also used a Gillette Platinum blade with it. Uh, really delivered a nice, nice shave with the Gillette Platinum uh, and uh, just had a really, really nice shave. Again, uh, the dual handle is nice because it kind of changes the approach and weight of the razor 
uh, changes things up a little bit. Let me just switch the handles all around so you can kind of see what the short handle looks like with the razor head. Uh, so it really changes up your uh, approach to the shave with this shorter handle. There it is right there. And uh, yeah, it uh, has a more compact feel. Uh, feels a little more nimble, a little more maneuverable, that sort of thing. Uh, long handle works well. The short handle works well. Uh, the, the shave is changed up a little bit depending on which handle you use. Uh, perhaps if you're going to travel, you would use the short handle, perhaps, if you want to save a little bit of weight um, uh, in your DOP kit. Uh, I think that would work very, very well. Uh, long handle uh, razor would probably travel, uh, the long handle with this razor head would probably travel very, well, very, very well as well. And uh, it's just very well made. The uh, handles have this nice pattern that is, well, for lack of a better word, sculpted in there. And it has some nice topography there where the pearl name is uh, also embedded in there on each handle, okay, like that. And uh, it, it affords a really, really nice grip. So it is, direct, it is decorative and also very, very functional. Really enjoyed the shave with this. Again, it's on the mild side. So uh, if you have a, a more demanding beard, uh, this may not be the, the razor that you want. But if you're like me, uh, and one day's worth of beard growth, uh, most razors, you can do two passes, two passes and a touch-up. That's what this razor is. If you have two to three days worth of beard growth, you're going to need, well, at least I needed three passes from this razor. And I'm not complaining because that's fine. You take your beard down in stages and I enjoy the process. I also did a head shave with this the other day and it did a wonderful job. Again, uh, two passes and some touch-up. Uh, more touch-up with this razor than some other razors, but again, it's a mild razor. And I enjoy the fact that I'm taking the hair off my head uh, in stages. I don't want to use an overly aggressive razor, especially on my head where there is a potential to nick myself. With this razor, I had no fear of nicking uh, my head during the head shave at all, and it did a really, really nice job. Mild, smooth, close, efficient, and uh, yeah, it took me maybe a, a little more, a few more touch-ups there. Usually with a head shave, I do a first pass, I do a second pass, and then I do some touching up. The touch-up phase, probably a little longer than some other razors, but still, it gave me a nice result, and I really enjoyed the process, and um, I didn't have any fear of, of nicking or cutting myself with this razor. That's the beauty of it. Perfect razor for beginners. Absolutely wonderful razor for beginners. And seasoned wet shavers will also like this, especially if you want to change the pace uh, of things. If you want to want to want a razor that's going to deliver a nice mild shave, I sure welcomed it. After having uh, nicked myself, this just again with the 1955 shave soap, it just skated over that that a uh, little bit of a nick there. It's still healing up. And this really, really did a great job. What a great choice uh, for the uh, last couple of shaves that I had with it. Really, really terrific. So that's the Pearl K2 uh, razor with uh, twin handles. My thanks to the folks at Pearl Shaving for sending this razor along for a review. I've done the review. I'm going to be editing it, and hopefully we'll get it posted uh, very, very soon. So again, my thanks to the folks at Pearl Shaving for passing this along. A really, really terrific razor. Mild, efficient. So if you are uh, in the market for a razor like that, check out the Pearl K2. And if you have the Pearl K2 razor, please comment below and let me know how you like it. All right. Thanks very much again to the folks at Pearl Shaving. I'll have links below. Now, before I forget, I wanted to mention the other two items that helped heal that shaving nick I got the other day. The first one was the Goodline Instant Nick Care Stick. This has a rollerball applicator. It has some really helpful liquid ingredients, and that rollerball applicator just kind of rolls that right on over the nick, stops the bleeding instantly, and it dries clear starts promoting the healing process. I like this one a lot. The other one is the Dr. Selby Skin Protectant Ointment. I use this post-shave follow-up to help promote the healing of the nick, and this did a really nice job. I applied this for the next few days, 
a couple times a day, two, three times a day, and that really helped promote the healing of the neck. So those two really, really helped uh, heal up that neck. Uh, the Goodline Instant Nick Care Stick with the rollerball applicator and the Dr. Selby Skin Protectant Ointment. Wanted to mention those two to you uh, before I forgot. Okay, earlier in the show, we talked about the uh, pearl shaving uh, SHD-24 antique brass razor with this really beautiful, ornate, yet functional handle right here. Uh, we talked about it in a previous Monday morning mailbag. Uh, I've had a shave with it. It really is very, very good. And as Mark Bagwell uh, said, it's less than $20. It's a great bargain and a really, really fine razor for the money. Uh, well, the folks at Pearl Shaving, as you know, sent along the K2, but they also sent along one other razor. They sent along the L55 antique brass razor. This has a more traditional handle uh, than the uh, SHD-24. So there they are side by side. Uh, the razor heads look to be similar, and I believe the razor head on the L55 is also zinc alloy. Uh, it is uh, plated uh, antique brass, but this is a solid brass handle as I understand it. And boy, it has some really, really nice, nice heft. And it has a traditional knurling kind of pattern there with some flutes cut into it. Uh, looks like it's going to afford a really, really nice, nice grip. I have not had a chance to shave with this yet, and I am planning on doing a review. Uh, this really just looks like a great classic uh, safety razor with a brass handle and a really, really wonderful uh, zinc alloy uh, antique brass plated head. So this is closed comb, I believe on their website. This is available on Amazon. I think it's less than $24. On the Pearl Shaving uh, website, you can get this L55 in some different configurations. You can get it both with a closed comb razor head, a base plate, a uh, closed comb base plate, and also an open comb base plate. Uh, and you can also get it in, I think, another plated color. Uh, so uh, really terrific, terrific looking razor. I haven't used it yet, but boy, the heft of this is really, really terrific. And um, just, uh, just a great looking razor. So if the SHD-24... Uh, was a little too ornate for you, but you wanted to try a, an antique brass razor from Pearl Shaving, well, here's the L55 that has a more traditional safety razor look, uh, solid brass handle, and uh, just a, a terrific, terrific uh, looking razor. So, uh, and the precision on this is, appears to be very, very good. Uh, opens up like that. Wow, look at that. It's a nice long threaded stud there. And of course, it's got a post and hole configuration to the cap and base plate. And there doesn't, there doesn't feel, there's no, there's no uh, uh, shimmying there at all. There's no slop. That's a really nice, precise fit. So I'm expecting good alignment and blade balance from this cap. Absolutely. Uh, and again, I guess if you wanted to use an O-ring, you could, but there's a countersink right there in the, in the bottom of the base plate right there. And the handle just fits like hand and glove. So, you know, up to you how you want to do that. I think the first time around, I'm just going to use it like this with no buffering. And, uh, you know, we'll go from there. Uh, but really a nice, nice uh, razor. It comes in a, uh, a nice package, a nice package like this, a sleeved package. Again, they give you 10 blades, 10 of the gentleman uh, razor blades, and a nice polishing cloth right there. So not... Um, so not a not a bad deal at all. I mean, a really nice deal for the uh, pearl shaving antique brass razor, the L55. I'll have links below to both the Amazon product page and also to the product page uh, directly to uh, pearl shaving. So my thanks again to the folks at Pearl Shaving for sending us along. I'm going to get a review done on this. I'm going to shave with it. I'm really looking forward to shaving with this. So again, my thanks to the folks at uh, Pearl Shaving. I'll have links below. And that wraps up another new wet shaving gear segment for this week. Thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week.
Okay, let's get to some of these questions and comments. Viewer Eric Schnitzer wrote the following. Hi, Mark. What's the life expectancy of a decent brush like the Doppler? I know you reviewed that. I have one and just curious if that's the only one I use and shave regularly. Uh, you know what, uh, Eric? It's an absolutely great question. First of all, I love the Doppler uh, shaving brush with the butterscotch handle. Thanks, Mom. Uh, and I went directly to Douglas Smythe and I asked him this question and he very, very kindly wrote back and said, brushes can last forever, really, as long as they are taken care of. Another beautiful thing about non-animal hair brushes. Yeah, these synthetic knots, I think they'll last forever. <laughs> they'll last forever. They'll last a good long time. I certainly noted to uh, Eric that these handles are so well made. Uh, these handles are definitely going to last. Uh, if you uh, are, are on forums or have looked at other wet shaving channels where they're doing a, uh, a refit of a, of a modern knot into a vintage handle and they're refurbishing and, and restoring uh, those uh, vintage brushes, uh, that's pretty amazing. And those handles are 60, 70 years old. And uh, you know what? They're just, they're just refurbishing them a little bit. They're doing some restorative work and inserting a new knot, and it's like it's good as new. So I would suspect that the handles uh, in the Phoenix, Phoenix shaving brush line are going to last a long, long time. And because of these synthetic knots, these are going to last a long, long time, as Doug pointed out long as you take care of them. Uh, one of the things I would avoid doing is running them under hot water. Don't use hot water on your shaving brush because that could, uh, that could melt the glue, loosen the glue up, and then the knot could become separated from the, uh, the handle. That's probably the one precautionary note that every seasoned wet shaver mentions to new wet shavers. Don't run the shaving brush under hot water. Warm water, not hot water. Uh, but yeah, the Phoenix Shaving offers a lot of great shaving brushes. The Doppler, the Star Wisp. Yeah, I got to remind myself. That is fantastic. Isn't that a beautiful brush? Again, uh, the knot in the handle, this looks like it's going to last a long, long, long time. Just take care of it. Uh, here is uh, the Simpson, the Simpson T3 Trafalgar. Another great handle, another great knot. and. Uh, Thanks to Mark Bagwell. Uh, here is the Sterling, the Sterling Pro shaving brush. Boy, this is uh, ter another terrific, another terrific shaving brush. Uh, again, a really terrific, robust handle, uh, nice knot, and of course, uh, something else from Simpson, uh, the M7. Thanks again to Jimmy V for this. Boy, this is a fantastic, fantastic bowl lathering brush. I just cannot get over how great of a bowl lathering brush this is. And uh, again, butterscotch handle. Thanks, Mom. Uh, really terrific, terrific uh, shaving brush. My thanks to Jimmy V. And it's got a synthetic bristle to it and a very, very robust handle. So yeah, I think that's, uh, that's, that's probably the long and short of it. The handles are going to last forever. The knots will last for a long, long, long time, provided you take care of them. That's the beauty of some of these synthetic knots that are out there right now. Very well made, cutting edge technology, beautiful softness, whips up a great lather in a bowl, does a great job face lathering. Uh, yeah, I would, I would say they're going to last a long, long time. If down the road, and this is just a, a, a note, I'm going to put it out there and uh, I'll put it also to the viewers. Just, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm just thinking if for some reason something happens to the, the knot, don't throw the handle away. You'll be able to repurpose that handle. You'll be able to put in a new shaving knot. Uh, you know, look at it that way. So um, you should get years and years and years and years of service from a good uh, synthetic shaving brush like the Doppler. Uh, the handle is just so very, very robust. And the shaving knot, as long as you take care of it, you know what? As Doug says, brushes can last forever, really, as long as they are taken care of. I hope that helps. Uh, Eric, uh, really do appreciate the question. Uh, to the viewers out there, if you have any other tips or tricks 
Regarding the care of a good synthetic uh, shaving brush like the Doppler, please comment below. Let us know. Really would appreciate it. Again, Eric, thanks very much. Well, I received a very informative email from viewer James Rathbun, and I wanted to share it with you. James wrote, Greetings, Mark. After watching your videos for several weeks, I share with your viewers an admiration for your upbeat, enthusiastic perspective on most things. I think you're the perfect antidote to grumps and killjoys. Well, thanks very much, James. I do appreciate that. He continues here, My topic of discussion is the butterfly type razor. My first razor back in the 60s was a Gillette Super Speed. The blades came in a dispenser that allowed you to drop the blade over the razor center bar with a push of your thumb without getting your fingers near the sharp edges. It also put the speed in super speed, making loading the blade both faster and safer than with other razor types. Now, I'll just stop right there uh, because uh, I believe I saw this uh, either on Matt Pisarsik's channel or somewhere else. But here's my late father's super speed right here. And James is referring to the center bar right there. You can see that little hook right there on the end of the center bar. That's what grabbed that blade from the dispenser where you could hook the blade onto that, the interior of the blade on that, and just kind of pull it and let it lay in there. So you had that hook right there on, on both sides of the center bar. If I recall correctly, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, if I recall, uh, that was Gillette's answer to the uh, injector razor, um, the Schick injector razor, because Schick was saying, hey, you don't have to touch the blade, just inject it into the razor head. And I think this was Gillette's answer to that. I think, I think that at some point prior to that, these, these center bars did not have that little hook there. I'll have to look. I'm, no, I'm not entirely sure. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, either way, really, really neat kind of system for loading a blade. Um, anyhow, he wrote here, the blades came off in the dispenser that allowed you to drop the blade over the razor center bar with a push of your thumb without getting your fingers near the sharp edges. It also put the speed in super speed, making loading the blade both faster and safer than with other types. I often take the blade out in mid-shave and rinse it off, something that's easy to do with a butterfly razor. I have a 1956 Super Speed, a Parker 87R, and a Vikings Blade Chieftain Junior, which is my favorite butterfly. In fact, I have two juniors, one of which I bought for under $9. Boom! Bargain! <laughs> so with my interest in mechanical gizmos, I decided to sit down with my Chieftain Junior and take a good look at how it works. What I first noticed was that the moving parts pivot around the stationary base plate and safety bars. Also, that the center or T-bar is soldered to the center of the two end struts. The struts are attached by pins to the heel of the boot-shaped extensions that are part of the wings. Butterflies have wings, not doors. <laughs> Allowing the wings to rotate. So... When you turn the knob counterclockwise, the T-bar rises, taking with it the end struts, which in turn raise the boot extensions. The toes of the boots are then tipped up by the underside of the safety bars, causing the wings to pivot and open up. With the wings fully open, the upper part of the boots are resting against the top of the safety bars. Now, if you're still awake, <laughs> turning the knob clockwise, forces the upper part of the boot against the safety bar, causing the wings to close. What I find interesting in all this is the resemblance to the escapement mechanism in the action of a piano. The base of the piano jack has a shape similar to the boot extension of the razor. The toe of the jack is tripped up by a left-off button, allowing the hammer to rebound off the strings. This makes me wonder if King C. Gillette was influenced by the piano action. I guess we'll never know. While Mercur and Edwin Jagger do not make butterfly razors, I think we can rely on companies like Parker and Vikings Blade to keep them in flight as they head towards their centennial in 2034 and beyond. And that's all I've got for you now. Jim Rathbun, St. Louis, Missouri. Jim, thanks very, very much. That was very, very informative and really very fascinating. The reason why I mention it is 
Is there anybody out there who knows whether or not the, the action of the piano, as James has described here, it, did it influence King C. Gillette and the design of the safety razor, the butterfly door safety razor? Uh, I mean, I'm really interested in knowing that. There's this great history with the traditional wet shave, the safety razors, shave soaps, shave brushes. It's just really, really fascinating, and it's a great rabbit hole to go down <laughs> because you learn so much. I mean, just with the uh, introduction of the quantum razor from Phoenix Shaving that we talked about earlier in new wet shaving gear, Douglas mentioned that it's based on a design from yesteryear, from the mid-30s. Wow. So, uh, again, just a, a, an absolutely fa fascinating and fantastic history associated with the traditional wet shave. So if anyone knows if King C. Gillette was influenced by the piano in designing the butterfly razor, or one of his engineers was influenced in designing the uh, butterfly razor, please let us know. Uh, James, a really fascinating and informative email regarding the possible connection between a butterfly twist open safety razor and the piano. Thanks very much for allowing me to share it with viewers. Really do appreciate it. Viewer Matthew Fisher wrote the following. Hey, Mark, great video. Thanks very much, Matthew. I appreciate that. I'm trying to get on a better shave schedule and not be lazy. How many days a week do you shave, morning or evening? Well, Matthew, I like to shave every single day. Sometimes I'll skip a day for two reasons. Uh, number one, I want a little more beard growth uh, when I review a new razor. I want to see how it performs, if I'm going to be able to uh, do a complete shave in two or three passes. It gives me an idea of how, uh, of how efficient or, and aggressive the razor is. If I have two days worth of beard growth, I can get a little better indication of how it performs. Uh, and uh, secondly, a lot of viewers out there keep saying we, we, we can't see your beard growth. Uh, when I shave on a daily basis and I only have one day's worth of beard growth being a fair-skinned individual, sometimes that beard doesn't really photograph as well as I'd like it to. So I'll skip a day, maybe even two days, uh, in order to have a little more beard growth. But ideally, I like to shave every single day. And I will tend towards a milder razor, a razor that's mild and efficient uh, if I'm shaving every single day. Uh, if I've skipped a day, then, uh, you know, something that's a little more aggressive uh, for that first pass, uh, especially if I'm using a, let's say, a, um, um, an adjustable razor, I'll turn it up a little more for that first pass and then turn it down towards the milder setting, uh, you know, that sort of thing. But I tend towards the, 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 the milder razor when I'm shaving, especially if I'm going to shave every single day. Uh, now, am I shaving in the evenings or mornings? I prefer to shave in the mornings. Uh, however, because of my schedule and because of some of the reviews I do, sometimes I will do an evening shave. Uh, and, you know, just because I have more time to lay things out and, uh, you know, after a busy day, that sort of thing. Kind of drives me crazy that, uh, you know, that I have that beard growth during the day. Uh, if, if it's a really, really good razor, though, and I get a great, great result, the next day, uh, it's, it's not so bad. But ideally, I like to shave in the morning. I love to shave in the morning. The weekends are really, really special. I might skip a Friday, so I have that great, great shave Saturday morning. And um, I'll do a review on Saturday morning. If I have a razor to review, I'll review it Saturday morning because I'll have that, that extra day's worth of beard growth, that sort of thing. So yeah, uh, I, try to, I, I try to shave in the morning and I try to shave every single day. I'm not always successful in doing that. Uh, sometimes I'll shave in the evening uh, because of uh, the reviews that, uh, that need to be done and just because of my schedule. Um, but um, yeah, ideally, I like to shave every day. I prefer to shave in the morning. So I'm kind of all over the map. And, and believe me, I'm not, I'm not complaining at all because I love doing the traditional wet shave regardless of when I do it. Now, my head shaves are almost always done in the evening. There are some times where I'll test a razor in the shower, uh, on my morning shower. I'll do that uh, just to see how it performs in the shower so I can tell other shower shavers who, who, who shave in the shower or do a head shave in the shower, yeah, this razor is pretty good for a shower shave, that, that sort of thing. 
But for head shaves, almost always uh, in the evening. Love doing an evening head shave. Uh, love the feel of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a nice shaved head as it hits the pillow in the evening. I mean, <laughs> nothing better than that, believe me. But uh, that's it in a nutshell. Not to repeat myself, I apologize, but I like to shave every day, prefer to shave in the morning. Sometimes I have to shave in the evening uh, in order to, you know, in order for the channel and to review razors and soaps and that sort of thing. Uh, I don't mind. It's great. It's just that the next day, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I kind of miss that morning shave. Uh, head shaves, uh, almost always in the evening with some exceptions of doing them in the shower. I hope that answers your question. And uh, thanks very much for asking it. I'll put it to the viewers. What's your shaving schedule? Morning, evening, uh, middle of the day? Uh, you're shaving every day? You're skipping a day? Uh, what about head shaves? Are you shaving every day? Are you doing a head shave every, every day? I do a head shave every other day. Uh, if I'm using a safety razor, I get a close enough result to where I can skip a day. And I enjoy that. Anything more than three days, though, I'm starting to get itchy for a head shave. That's for sure. And also, before <laughs> before we uh, before I wrap it up, uh, I will also skip a day uh, for a head shave if I'm going to use a particular razor to review uh, as a head shave. Want a little more hair growth so you can see it on camera, that sort of thing. So uh, that's it, Matthew. Um, hope that answers your question, folks. Comment below. Let us know what your shaving schedule is. Matthew, really do appreciate it. Viewer Paul DeJardin asked the following question, and he wrote, Good morning, Mark. Great 3MBS per usual. Quick question. How do the PAA Strangelet blades compare to the Astra Platinum? Are they sharp? Well, that's a your mileage may vary kind of question, Paul. And before I give you my thoughts on it, let me put it to the viewers. Have you used both the Phoenix Shaving Platinum Strangelet Blades and the Astra Platinum Blades? And if you have, how do they compare? Please comment below and let us know. Now, uh, let me say this about the Astra Platinum Blades. These were a game changer for me early on in my wet shaving journey. Uh, this was a blade that was recommended by a lot of wet shavers out there. You always saw it discussed in a lot of wet shaving forums. It really is one of those blades, for some reason, beginner wet shavers gravitate to. And it has this wonderful platinum coating on it. For lack of a better description, I've always regarded it as, as, as kind of a softness and roundness to the, uh, to the blade edge. So that the blade edge isn't that harsh as it is with some other uh, razor blades that don't have the platinum coating. Let me put it to you that way. Uh, and the uh, platinum strangelet blades uh, are comparable. They, it has the same kind of, uh, of rounded softness to this really, really nice sharp edge. Uh, I would say both of them uh, you know, really cut down on that harshness of the blade edge. Let me, let me put it to you that way. That's kind of the it's kind of the way uh, I can best describe it. Uh, now, having said that, it's been a long time since I've used the Astra blade. So I can't really say right now whether this is sharper than the uh, Phoenix Shaving uh, Platinum Strangelet or not. Uh, I, I really can't say that because uh, since starting the channel, talking to a lot of viewers, um, you know, getting their thoughts, uh, and uh, tips and tricks about the wet shave. They've introduced me to a lot of different great razor blades out there. And there are so many. That's why I say it's a great time to be doing the traditional wet shave because there is so much available out there in one category where there is just a, a multitude of choices uh, is the category of razor blades. So I'm going to have to put these back into a razor. And now that I've you know, gotten a packet of them. I'm putting them in my shaving den and uh, on an upcoming shave, I'm going to uh, use these and I'll be able to give you a better idea uh, on how they compare with the Platinum Strangelet razor blade, which is why I'm asking viewers to comment. Maybe they've recently used each of these side by side for a shave and they can kind of shed some light on it. Uh, I think, you know, as if memory serves me, they're comparable. Which one is sharper? Again, hard to say. I think it's a your mileage may vary kind of, um, a kind of question. However, for me, as I recall, the Astra has the same kind of approach 
uh, uh, the same kind of an edge, a softer roundness, uh, a softer, rounder kind of edge to it uh, without losing any sharpness to it uh, that the Platinum Strangelet has. Let me put it to you that way. Uh, that's how they impress me. So I would say that uh, being uh, you know platinum coated blades, they have that similarity to it. Uh, I'll have to use them again in order to tell you whether or not the sharpness is a little more or a little less than the platinum strange laser blade. Um, again, there are so many great razor blades out there uh, to choose from. Uh, it, it's like it, as I say, there's a multitude of them and. Uh, a great, great time to be doing the traditional wet shave. So uh, I hope that answers your question. That's why I'm asking the viewers to please comment below. Let us know uh, if you uh, comment on this subject. Hey, you know what? We get enough comments. I'll put it in the refill uh, next week. And uh, that way we can kind of get some uh, comparisons some thoughts uh, and uh, how other viewers uh, feel that these two razor blades compare. Would really, really be interested in reading those comments and sharing them with the viewers in next week's refill segment on the Monday Morning Mailbag. Paul, thanks very, very much for a, uh, a great, great question. Uh, we'll try to get some answers for you, and I'll try to give you an answer after having used the Astro Blades again. Again, I haven't used these in a long time because of all the other great blades I've been using, including the uh, Phoenix Shaving Platinum Strangelet. Paul, thanks very much for the question. Really do appreciate it. Now, earlier in the show, we talked about the Pearl uh, L55 Antique Brass Razor. Well, this is not the Pearl L55 Antique Brass Razor. Well, it is and it isn't. Here in my left hand is the Pearl L55 Antique Brass Razor. This was a really, really happy accident or happy coincidence. Uh, Alex Lopez very, very kindly sent along this razor right here in my right hand. This is the Timeless Bronze Solid Bar Safety Razor Head that he affixed to the Pearl L55 Antique Brass Handle. How about that? And they go together so well. Now, I've had a shave, and I've also done a review of this. It gave a wonderful, wonderful shave. This razor head by Timeless, the bronze solid bar safety razor head, has a 0.38 millimeter blade gap. It delivers a really mild, wonderful, beautiful shave. And, of course, I mentioned uh, how much wonderful heft and weight the, the pearl shaving brass handle has. And it is solid brass. So it's a solid brass handle on a bronze shaving, uh, attached to a bronze shaving head. And it really did a great job. And look, doesn't that look marvelous? It just goes so well together. My thanks for Alex Lopez for sending it along. And again, I've done a review on this. It's going to be interesting to see how this razor head compares to the actual brass razor, the L55 from Pearl Shaving. So uh, that's kind of in my hip pocket too when I do this review of the L55. But the other reason why I mention this is because a lot of wet shavers love to mix and match handles and razor heads. I don't tend to do that because a lot of razors out there, let's say Edwin Jaggers and the Mula, the razor heads aren't labeled. And of course, the Mula R89 is so similar to uh, an Edwin Jagger DE89 that I won't mix and match those razor heads and handles because down the road, I'm not going to know which is which because they look so similar. However, with something like this, where you know for sure that this is a pearl uh, shaving uh, handle because it's labeled as such. Right there on the bottom, you can see it says pearl on the bottom there. And it also has the uh, the logo and the logo on the side of it right there at the bottom of the handle. And the timeless uh, bronze head has, you know, timeless. Let me make sure I'm sure holding that correctly. Yeah, there it is right there. It has the timeless uh, bronze right there carved in uh, to the bottom of the plate there. And you know that that's a scalloped cap that goes with it. So, uh, you know, I don't mind... Uh, you know, having these two uh, married together because I know that, uh, I know for sure that it's a timeless razor head and it's a pearl handle. So I don't mind doing a little mixing and matching when I know each component 
is clearly labeled and I know which is which. So uh, who knows, down the road, uh, maybe I'll come across a handle, the actual bronze handle from Timeless uh, for this razor head, and then I'll be able to attach it and I'll know that the handle goes with the razor head. And, you know, I can always down the road think, hey, well, hey, you know, I'd like to use the pearl handle again with the razor head. And you know what? I know which one it is. It's labeled right there. So my sincere thanks to Alex Lopez for sending along this terrific uh, razor. Uh, it really is a one-of-a-kind, unique razor. Uh, the Timeless Bronze Solid Bar Safety Razor Head with a 0.38 millimeter blade gap uh, that is attached to the Pearl Brass, the Pearl L55 Antique Brass Handle. A wonderful, wonderful combination. It just delivered an absolutely wonderful shave. I'll be editing that review and posting it soon. And I uh, just really uh, enjoyed, enjoyed the shave that this delivered. And it's one of the few times where I don't mind mixing and matching a razor head with a handle because I know which is which. So my thanks again to Alex Lopez for sending us along. Alex, thank you very, very much. Appreciate all the support you've given the channel. Again, uh, there it is, folks. I'll link to the uh, Timeless uh, website where you can look at the bronze razor. And also, again, I'll link to uh, Pearl Shaving where you can uh, get a look at the L55 Antique Brass Razor. Alex, thanks again very, very much. Really do appreciate it. And that wraps up another Monday Morning Mailbag for this week. Thanks so much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share. Please subscribe. Please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below. Let me know. Check out all the wonderful artists and soap makers that you see displayed on the bottom of the screen right now. They make and offer some wonderful artisan shave soap. They also offer some wonderful wet shaving gear to enhance your traditional wet shave. The next time you're online, please take a moment, pay them a visit. I sure would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Also, check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash Mark Zerady, where you'll find all the Amazon listed products that I review on this channel, organized and categorized so you can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this laugh. Hey, we have another double take cartoon puzzle this week. Try to find the differences between the two cartoon panels. If you need more time, just pause the video. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week.